at this point, you're only a couple weeks in, what would you say is your biggest challenge that you've seen so far in terms of trying to bring down crime and improve the situation? Well, you know, coming into any new city, and this is not my first time coming into a new city, taking on a senior leadership role in public safety. But like in any community, you got to get to know the players, get to move around, get to know people, they get to know you, at least some initial contact. But the biggest, one of the biggest challenges here is relates to public safety. Uh, and even if you're talking police specifically, let's say, and I assume that's what you're talking, is of course the enormous shortages that we have mm. inside the police department. It is huge. Uh, Any time that you lose uh, 250 plus police officers over a short period of time, that's a huge impact upon any agency. But the department itself has really been working hard, trying to manage itself around those shortages and still trying to respond to, to calls for service and doing it in a professional and respectful way. So I admire the work that they're doing in police uh, but it certainly is a major strain on the men and women who are out there every day and uh, the amount of overtime and et cetera they, you know, that they work to help fill those shortages. But I think what's going to be critically important to help us in this time of these shortages is that we really need that community support. And that's across all of your uh, public safety domains in which I'm responsible for. Uh, but very specifically here, again, if you're talking police, we're going to need that community support because communities are able to see things, hear things that we may not have, may not be privy to, right? And it's so helpful uh, when we have a shooting, say for an example, uh, we know there are people out there who are witnesses, we know there are people out there who talk to other people, we know that that exists, but we need we need folks, even if they just call anonymously, mm -hmm. they need to tip off our investigators as to where to look, who to, who to, somebody that we can identify and begin to do some work around. And that's hugely important because we have a lot of cases that we can probably follow up on a lot better, but we need that community support in order mm -hmm. to do that. Now, understanding. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that, yes, we know we still have challenges in building relationships across this city, and we're working hard in terms of trying to do that, and we're going to continue to do that. But if you think about all your public safety domains, all five of them in which I'm responsible for that report for me, to me, it is just so essentially important, whether it's in police, a fire, 911, emergency management, Office of Neighborhood Safety, wherever it is, it is so important that we have community involvement when it comes to our crime fighting er uh, efforts and in keeping the community safe altogether. Now you've touched on two things I want to follow up on, uh, one of them of being staffing. Um, I know there's a campaign, a marketing campaign that's about to come out, uh, choosing, I think the city's about to choose a vendor for recruiting purposes. Um, I think it runs like 16 or 18 months, this effort. Will we likely, with that, try to, with our staffing shortage, you know, poach officers from other cities kind of thing? Or will you be focusing solely here in Minneapolis and maybe the, the competitiveness, area? The competitiveness of trying to recruit police officers at this very moment in this space where time we're in is an issue across the country. Mm -hmm. It is an issue across the country. We don't see a lot of young people who have an interest of coming into the profession for a variety of different reasons. Uh, we have a younger generation of young people who are choosing to do many other things. Some things independent of working for anyone and some of them may move around two or three years. They're jumping from jobs to job and the literature will point this out. So police are affected by that as well. Mm -hmm. Public safety is affected by that as well. So our recruitment efforts are going to have to be far more different, I believe, than what they've been in the past. So I have uh, asked one of the command staff deputy chiefs that I met with here just a few days ago and shared some ideas with him in terms of some things that we can begin to do locally right here in this community right. in order to tar target 
resources from outside our own community. We have a very broad, very diverse population of people that need to be representative of our of our all of our public safety platforms. So we had an in-depth conversation, and, and there are some things he's currently working on uh, at my request and his input as to being far more idealistic, if you will, because we got to come up with new ideas. We just can't advertise on social media and think people are going to come out. We're really going to now have to de take this whole recruitment game out into the community, out into the community locally and out into the community nationally because there are police departments that are going from state to state now in their recruiting efforts uh, because we just can't wait for people to find us. We have to go out and find people now. We have to be creative about it. This is a great community, a beautiful community. Uh, the salaries here are very competitive. The opportunities for growth in the department are great. So it's not just looking for those who are laddering over. There's a process for that. But the real numbers are going to be really in those that we recruit nationally and locally in particular because I truly believe there's a lot of local talent here, but we have to show an interest in them and we have to let them get to know us and see us uh, up close. And I think that will drive hopefully some applications of people who have an interest in being in public safety, both in police and fire and 911. Uh, certainly where we struggle for numbers. Um, you had also touched on the importance, and I know this has been your message since uh, you've gotten here, of working together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, OVP, or uh, I guess it's called the Office of Neighborhood Safety uh, now. Um, yes. You know, they have a history of kind of some, many of them not wanting to work with the police. Um, and some I hear are threatening to quit if they are forced to work with the department. Um, how do you get this, and, and some council members are, have this anti-police sentiment, sentiment. How do you change that when you really want everybody to basically not feel that way or at least to say, okay, but I'll work with them? So let me be perfectly clear about something. The only thing I'm interested in is the public safety of people throughout this city. The 430,000 residents that live here and the thousands of people who come into this city every day to do business. That's what my primary concern is. You know, the anti-police sentiment uh, is the opinion of those who choose to take that route, mm -hmm. whether they're elected officials, whether they're citizens in the community or whatever. But something I'm going to be very, very clear about, we're going to have public safety in this city, and we're going to have police in this city, and we're going to, where from where I sit, do everything that I can to make sure that we have a public safety platforms across all five platforms, we're going to make sure that they're responsive to the community in spite of the shortcomings that we have in numbers, that they're going to be respectful, they're going to do things that are, are, are constitutional and legal and ethical. I'm, and, and, and that's the goal here, and that's what I say to them and that's what I expect for them to go out and do every day. And they're out there doing it at this very moment while we're speaking. We can not continue to look in our rearview mirror. We have to learn from the mistakes we made in the past, but at some point we have to move forward. And in moving forward, that means that how do we build public safety platforms in which people in our downtown communities, people that live up north, people that live south in the city, feel that they have a relationship with their public safety community in which they feel confident in. We have to work at building that, right? Mm -hmm. We know we do. That's an ongoing thing. Every call for service we go to is an opportunity to build a relationship. Some people are going to be receptive of the service. Some people are not. But I think for any of us that are in a leadership position, especially elected officials and those in appointed positions, we have to, at, a, at some point, understand the importance of public safety because our responsibility, regardless of who we are, we still have a responsibility to the public in which we were elected by, in which they were elected by, in order to make sure we have good public safety. This anti-sentiment, this negativity, this hating on police is not going to get this great city where it needs to be. Because I will say this again to you, 
The only reason I came here was an attempt to make a difference in a city that is a wonderful American city that has had his struggles in the last several years that's trying to move away from that, trying to do something different and better, but you're not going to do it different and better if we allow ourselves to stay in the same place of this negativity. It's just not going to work. Do you believe in uh, police reform and specific, uh, because some folks still want that, Chief Hoffman's made a lot of nice, a lot of changes recently. Um, specifically, do you believe in a SWAT team? Do you believe in a no-knock warrant? Um, student resource officers that have been pulled out of schools. How do you feel about reform and specifically those three Well, areas? let's talk about SWAT. Number one, we all need a special weapons and tactics unit. But we need a special weapon and tactics unit that is very well trained, very well disciplined, and no, we cannot do no-knock warrants unless it's under very extreme circumstances that should be outlined in policy. We have to be more planful. We have to make sure we gather intelligence information before we hit that door. And I think there's opportunities abound in which we all can learn from. We're learning across the country how to do this better. But I think to just be critical uh, all the time without having the discussion as to how do we make things better is counterproductive. So we have to learn from everything that we do. We learn from the things that we do well, and we certainly learn from the things that we don't do well. But SWAT has its place in law enforcement, but under certain circumstances, and that's all gonna be up for review for me here pretty soon. Number two, uh, what was the other thing you mentioned? Um, I said SWAT uh, and uh, the no-knock warrants. And no-knocks, yes. Yeah. Uh, there, there is new policy around no-knocks. And I think we have to move away from no-knocks except under certain circumstances. For an example, someone on the other side of that door is in immediate danger, imminent danger. Or there is provable and likable evidence that could be or is being destroyed in that very moment. Short of that, we have to be planful, we have to gather intelligence information, and we have to know as much as we can about who's on the other side of that door before we enter. So those are not uh, nothing but, but ways in which we learn from our past. Mm -hmm. And we're learning that across the country. And we're learning it here. Uh, but here again, uh, there's a lot for me to, to explore, it looked like. I've only been here a little over two weeks. Mm -hmm. But already, uh, we're going to continue to do what we can, and, we, and that's going to be a lot, to promote uh, this relationship between police and community, because that's the first thing we have to do. And we also have to have our partners as well, who are outside of this city, uh, to continue to work with us and be hopeful to us as we go through this, this challenging time. And we're going to be there, be, be there for them as well. And right now you have, um, we have um, this consent decree that's going to come down. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of control right now, um, a new position. I think a lot of people are looking for what you can do. How do you continue to do what you plan to do, losing some control with some sort of independent monitor that's agreed upon between the DOJ and the city? Well, I mean, it's just the position that we're in. So we're going to have to learn how to adjust to it. And, uh, and there'll be a lot of adjustment when it comes to a consent decree, because we certainly do have to adhere to those recommendations that are going to be made. And we're going to have to accept whatever it is that comes from the state or come from the Justice Department or however those two are paired together in terms of hopefully just one consent decree that we have to uh, uh, abide by. But we just have to accept that challenge, and we have to do the, and we will accept it, as you heard the mayor say, and uh, we're just going to work our way through that consent decree. This is where we are, and uh, I knew that coming in, in coming into this, there was a possibility for it, uh, and it's certainly not a position that you want to be in, but it appears that it is going to be the position that we will be in. So we adapt, we adjust, and we do what we need to do to make it work for this community and to make it work for this department in the long run. These are challenges. We don't run away from challenges. We shouldn't run away from challenges. And we should not 
continually criticize ourselves in this community because there are people who like to criticize mm -hmm. uh, their government, their public safety platforms, their police more specifically. But quite frankly, this is not a time to criticize. This is a time when we really have to come together. We really have to find ways in which to move our city forward together because that's the only way we're gonna re remain a strong city. That's the only way we're gonna pull ourselves out of this recent past that uh, we've been stricken with here in the perception of how people see us, not only in this community, but across the country. And we have to find our way back and we're going to find our way back, but it's gonna take all of us to do it. And I will say again to the naysayers and to the haters that are out there who seem to find some resolve and kind of helping keep this city in this place, it's not going to work. We're going to move forward. And I'm going to challenge anyone who push back on public safety just because they think they can, because this is not going to be some punching bag. This is going to be an opportunity for public safety in this city to move forward, to give the people in this city what they need, professional, courteous, courteous constitutionally driven public safety. And that's what we're going to do. And anything short of that is not going to meet the qualifications for me because this is not hard work, quite frankly. We make it harder. Nobody outside of this city is making it hard for us. It's those who reside here oftentimes who cannot, but everybody got to, everybody got to do their part. Everybody, including the media, in terms of how you even report out news, including the community who sometimes, oftentimes, constantly report this, or talk about this anti-sentiment towards policing. It's not a time for that now. We really got to come together in the community. I'm gonna take that charge, I'm gonna take that lead, and people wanna push back, they can expect from me to be pushed back on. Because, I was, yeah. I was gonna... No, give her one more, go ahead. I, I you know, and I, I was gonna say, this is, this is not a race and a marathon, and what would be uh, maybe the first change that's obvious, you know, uh, under your direction. But I think it's going to be this this idea of unity. And, and, right. Right. Okay. How how long do you think that is going to take you? I don't know how long it's going to take. But here's what I do know: we got to move in that direction. In order to move forward, we got to be uniformed in terms of doing that. We got to be unified to do that. There are going to be people who go, want to move forward, and they will. And there will be those, no matter what. They're just not going to come along. But I'm not going to wait for them. We got to move forward with folks who want, community people who want to move forward. That is it. You're always going to have the naysayers. No matter what you do, it's not going to ever be good enough. All right. One more question. And it's, you have, there's an extraordinary amount of money going out to this community group, activist group, this community activist group. And I mean, there are a lot of good ones out right. there. Um, how do you get? There's a lot of overlap as well, and, right. and, none, and there's even competition because they're all trying to get money. Right. I hear the stories behind the scenes. How do you manage that so together, you know, there's some sort of organization to as what of, they're as doing? As of this week, the Office of Violence Prevention, or the new Office of Neighborhood Safety, uh, they certainly do finance a number of these different programs right. throughout the city. And one thing I've asked the acting director, as of this week, actually, will be sitting down with me, going through each one of those programs in terms of the service they provide, how they provide it, how long they provide and they've been providing it, and if there's any data to support the effectiveness mm -hmm. of what it is that they're doing. Because I totally agree with you. There is a lot of programs that are out there, but what's the effectiveness of it? Right. And that's what I'm going after. And so I'm going to be addressing that uh, actually here in another day. Uh, because those are going to, because I'm going to be asking a lot of tough questions internally to each one of those domains in which I'm responsible for. But if I can encourage anything, uh, is, is for you all to be able to get out in the community through this interview and through other interviews, the opportunity that we got to move forward together. That's the only way we're going to reduce crime in this city. It's not going to be one individual. It's not gonna be just the police department by itself. It has to be a collectiveness of the community at large. We have a huge downtown business community of corporate 500 companies that are certainly need our support 
not just police support, but community support, because that's where we thrive. We thrive through business and industry. That which drives the economy, that's what creates jobs, that's what creates opportunities. And we have to be able to do everything that we can to protect that. And all of us have a responsibility because there are people that live throughout this community on the north end of town, in the south end of town, who want good policing. And to have good policing, we all have to be able to do it together. Thank you for the opportunity to be Thank here you with much. you today. I appreciate it. Thank I really you very do. Thank you very much. Thank you.